<laughs> hey everyone, how's it going? Um, welcome to the Facebook Live. Um, I'm very, very excited to have Heather, Heather Field from Paws of Bees um, to come chat to us today. Um, so as soon as you guys come online, um, we're just waiting for people to join. Um, please just post in the comment section if you can hear us clearly. Every now and again, we have some problems with our audio and we want to make sure that you hear all this really useful information. Um, Heather, do you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got into the fields, um, where you're based and what you currently do? Yeah, thank you. And firstly, thank you for having me, Megan. I really appreciate it. Um, I am based in the most beautiful suburb called Clubview in Centurion. I have been running my vet physio and hydrotherapy practice for about 10 years. Um, we do a whole lot of different things, puppy classes, behavior, um, and of course, hydro, which is our main focus this side. And um, yeah, it's been a long journey to get here, but it is the most rewarding work on earth. And, and tell me, how many people have you got working? You've got quite a big center. I mean, a few years ago, I was there um, doing some of my workshops. Um, and you've got a big sense there. How many people have you got working for you and how many dogs per day are you are you seeing um, in your in your center? It's only me and two other therapists and of course um, old Jonas that is our all-rounder guy this side. Um, I've got a tremendous setup. I've got a complete hydrotherapy practice with a spa bath, an underwater treadmill and a tremendously big indoor pool. Then I've got an outside dog training arena, which is undercover. I've got a tremendous gym and, of course, all the consultation rooms that goes with it. And the most magnificent garden that we make use of to work in um, in summertime and the weather allows us to. Um, so the setup is just really peaceful and tranquil and, and just beautiful. And it really calms and relaxes the owners and the dogs when they get here. And of course, you get all the endorphin release, and that's exactly what we want. Yeah, it really is. It's a wonderful, wonderful place. They've got this great grass area. And I remember when we did our workshops, we had to do all our therapeutic exercises there. It was really good. Um, Heather, we, we, we want to share with pet owners. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of pet owners might not have, have access to wonderful facilities like yours. Um, so depending on where, where they live, um, so where they are in the world or in South Africa, um, so we want to share with them just some do's and don'ts on how to do hydrotherapy at home. So what would the first considerations be whether, you know, if they were thinking about doing hydrotherapy at home, what would they first think about? What would they need to do? So I would most definitely say the very first thing is to get the go ahead from your vet. Quite often, if a dog suffer major trauma or surgery or is in severe pain, um, or if there's an acute onset of in, 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 um, inflammation, the might, best way might be cage rest initially before you actually start with the hydro process. And then, of course, you need to consider what type of equipment you've got available. And um, that will all play a role as to what you want to achieve at the end of the day. And you, you, you really have to research the subject of hydrotherapy a little bit. It's not just a question of put your dog in a pool and expect it to recover. You really need to consider um, the injury what your dog's got and really consider um, your dog's activity levels prior to the injury and how you are going to get your dog back to, to, to such a place. Yeah, so, so what type of equipment would you need? I mean, obviously, everyone's got, if you've got a pool, um, I think that's what you need. Um, but there's other equipment, maybe harnesses, life jackets. What would you, what would you recommend initially that somebody use if they're just first starting teaching their, their dogs to swim? Okay. So I think, firstly, what you need to consider is basically um, what format are you going to use? Are you going to use a bath? then if so, is your bathtub deep, en deep enough to have a non-slip -slip surface? Are you going to use a kiddies blow-up pool? Are you going to use an ex actual um, um, swimming pool? And from there, you can really suss out what would be the best for your dog. If you've got a teeny weeny little toy breed, by all means, a spa bath might just be perfect. But if you've got a 60 kilogram bull mastiff, your spa or your bath is most definitely not going to suffice for the for, for what you want to accomplish. 
So really consider those things. And within your pool, obviously you need to consider your, your temperature. You need to look at the, the, the um, you have to have some pool management to know if the pH levels are correct. Have you got a step that is deep enough for your dog? Um, have you got a resting platform? Should your dog be tired? And once you've kind of sussed out those things, then you need to consider what physical equipment you're going to use for your dog. Um, we recommend for our smaller little puppies quite often a, um, a little harness, especially an H harness or a rough wear support harness will work really well. But it is important, but it must be custom fit exactly for your dog. And then if you consider your larger, heavier breeds, most definitely a life jacket. And then we also got floating devices to give your dog additional support. And might it be a floating device to keep the neck and the four um, limbs up? It might be um, a pool noodle that you can use in different formats to help your dog. So once you've got all of those things ready, then you really can consider the actual pet and how you're going to progress from there. Let's just talk about those temperatures, you know, because on one of the Facebook groups that I have, um, one of the pet owners was using a spa bath, and I think the temperature was like 33, 34 degrees. So we have two different extremes. You might have somebody in the spa bath, and you might have somebody with an outside pool that's really cold. And, you know, I know ideally your, your hydrotherapy pools and everything are temperature regulated. So what are your suggestions to people, you know, if they're swimming outside of a protection? Um, is that something that they should do certain times of the year only? Um, and what would the ideal temperature would you say, say, for example, if it was a heated pool or spa bath that they were using? Okay. So ideally, um, we would like a temperature between 22 and 26 degrees. So it is a big cons um, variation between the two. But it's also going to depend on what your dog is used to. If you stay in an area where it's relatively much cooler throughout the year, then obviously your dog would be inclined to be more tolerant of colder areas. Um, but also if your pool is too, heat, if, uh, too hot, if it might be heated by solar panels or whatever, and you have got a very active, very fit dog, that might be too hot for your dog. So you need to cool it down. And um, so between 22 and 26 is really a good temperature. And for us who needs to get into the pools with them, um, it's far more tolerant. There are chances where you really want to just soak sore or tight muscles in a bath. Then most definitely you can up your, your bath temperature to about 50 degrees or even a little bit higher. So for instance, you're going to put your dog in there who's really old, suffer from arthritis, and you just want to take Arnica and really massage that little body, then normally a warmer temperature might be um, induce more uh, a feeling of relax and calm. Yeah, so one thing that's important is that you get your go-ahead from your vet, um, because especially with some old dogs, um, the fusion might not be that good. They might have um, some underlying heart conditions. And what we really want, don't want to do is put them into hot water. So whenever yes. you're doing any of please get your go-ahead um, from your from your vet. Yeah. And cool. So let's try a little bit about getting the dog water. So like if your dog, I mean, in an ideal situation, we would want um, people to go to a hydrotherapy center, get their dog used to swimming, get their dog swimming optimally, um, and then, you know, if they were struggling time-wise to do the maintenance to get them to the hydrotherapy center, they could use swimming at home um, in certain times of the year, depending on the temperature. So that's not ideal. But obviously, for those people that have no access at all. So now they literally are introducing their, their dog to swimming for the first time. What would your recommendations be? Sure. I would say firstly to have the patient or the pet consideration. You definitely need to look at the breed, the age, the weight, your dog's activity levels um, um, or injury levels prior to you need to get him into the pool. And then you need to see the injury. Is it a primary or is it a secondary issue that you need to address? And is it an acute or a chronic condition? 
Is your dog in pain? And so all of those things. And then you need to know what type of injury um, or for what purposes are you going to um, do some home hydrotherapy. And the conditions you need to consider, whether it's orthopedic condition, a neurological condition, um, whether it's just really for old age with arthritis, do you want to achieve some weight loss, is it stiffness or strengthening, or are you just doing a basic maintenance program to keep your dog optimally fit and mobile? So those are the patient considerations. Then if you start looking at your initial time period to swim, um, you need to consider all the previous things that we've said. But then you really, really have to look at um, to evaluate your dog and use your hands, use your eyes and use your common sense. Um, quite often, just feel your dog through, see if there's underlying pain. Is there a hot spot? Um, if, is your dog nervous if you touch certain parts of the body? And then once you have done these um, evaluations, um, then only you can decide, okay, I want to um, get my dog fit or I want to address whatever condition it might be. And then only are you really ready to start with the swimming. So initially, you have to be very calm and very, very gentle when you get your dog in, uh, into the pool. And if I can put out there in red and in bold letters there, you need to be in the pool with your dog. You cannot tie it to a device and think your dog's going to cope. Because chances, if it's the first time your dog's going to panic, it's going to frantically pick with the front limbs and the hind limb is just going to sink down. And then you in a panic and what happens next? So firstly, it was a really bad traumatized experience for your dog. So if you've got a harness on, Quite often we suggest that you one hand support the stomach and the other one will hold on to the harness. So you keep your dog relatively level and make sure that it's not going to swallow a lot of water. Then if you're going to use a floating device like a balloon or a pool noodle, you must ensure that it's not restricting the range of motion. And if you want to maybe have a forward extension with the forelimb, you might ensure that it's a free flow. What's also very important, depending on the condition of your dog, to always first sw start swimming in a straight line, the very wide circles at the end. And as your confidence levels dog, and as the dog gets stronger and fitter, then you can start incorporating maybe a figure of eight, and over a time period, decrease your circles. So you really make sure your dog get worked on holistically and do not just focus on one particular um, limb or spot. So I really like a life jacket um, because then you know obviously that they're supported. You know, I've seen a lot of posts on, on these Facebook groups of people, you know, they basically put them into a, a spa bath or put them in the bath and literally pull them backwards like that, you know. Um, and, you know, I... I in, the, in my comments, you know, I say, like, if you had to try and swim, right, with somebody holding and you were treading water and somebody was holding you backwards, you would sink. So it's really, really difficult um, to do that. So we actually need them to swim. Um, and like Heather says, really, in a straight line, ideally. And let's talk about time because I think often, um, you know, pet owners think that they must be swimming for like 10 minutes and they don't realize that actually just 30 seconds initially is such hard work for them. Absolutely. Again, you're going to consider your dog's fit, fitness levels before you put them into the, into the pool. But yes, ideally, um, if your dog's being compromised and you're in the recovery phase, then basically you're going to, initially what you might do is even just put your dog on the step and manually move the hind limbs for your dogs. And we always advise there must be two responsible adults in the pool with the dog. One to support the front and one to support the hind till your dog really get the feel for the swim. And then only you can progress. But yes, I absolutely agree with you. Um, you know what, to, to, to swim the dog, you cannot just put the dog in and think it needs to swim. And 
one of the fun things that we do at my practice, I present puppy aqua classes. So as the puppies have gone through the initial puppy socialization course, we have a fun day where we get all the puppies and the owners in the pool. We show them exactly how to handle the pool and you make it fun for all the puppies. You build their confidence and that really sets the tone going forward if you ever need to consider home hydrotherapy. And you teach them where to get out. I mean, that's also important, you know, how to get to the Absolutely. Especially with, with, with puppies. So, guys, thanks all of you for joining. If you guys have got any questions as we're going through, please just um, type them in the comment section and I'll get Heather to, to answer them. Um, Heather, so going back now, so let's say, like, if we look at a, a dog that's just started, how many times a week would they be swimming and then how, for how many minutes would they swim, you know, like, say, basically 30 seconds with a 30-second race? So what would you recommend and how you would build up to, say, like a month later, what would they be doing? Absolutely. Again, you're going to consider your dog. Um, and once you, you know where your dog is, you can progress it. But quite often we would suggest to start off with a 50 second swim for a compromised dog. If you just want to do fitness or weight loss, you can go up to a minute and rest your dog. Then swim another minute and that you can repeat between, say, four to six minutes if need be. And then you're going to get your dog a rest day or two rest days and you can start this process again. What you need to consider, if your dog is really, really battling um, and you're not quite sure um, if you should maybe refer your dog to a hydrotherapist or refer back to the vet, um, what makes you realize you're not progressing or achieving the results that you need to do? Um, but once your dog is really into the pool and you get it, you can swim your, pool, your dog easily three times a week. But exactly like you say, you know what, only 50 seconds of swimming um, might be your entire afternoon out in the felt for some dogs. And if your dog is a complete couch potato, you cannot ex expect him or her to do this three or four times a week. Coming back to what I said, um, maybe you need to refer your dog. We really need to know when is the optimal time to refer back to a professional person. And we quite like to say, so for instance, your dog had a cruciate ligament rupture and it was stabilized by whatever means. And you're gonna do some home hydrotherapy and within six swimming sessions, you see that your dog is really stiff, really sore. Um, it even looks anxious or fearful to get into the pool, or it is very aloof or trying to avoid you when you call into the pool. Those are all things that you need to decide, wow, maybe my dog is really in pain. And how am I going to address the pain? Because you cannot let your dog swim if he is in a whole lot of pain, because chances that you're going to... Um, just make it worse is really, really good. So then you can even phone up your vet or a hydrotherapist or a veterinary physiotherapist and ask them to explain and run you through a pain scale. So you can take that information home and say, okay, this is where we're at. Maybe I should revise and relook at my home program and how I want to swim my dog. Because it might be that swimming is not optimally what you want. You rather should get your dog in an underwater treadmill to make sure that there is a complete range of motion within the limbs and the dog is actually doing a full motion or a kicking motion in the pool and not just holding the, the hip tight and kicking out of the out of the stifle. Yeah, and also, I mean, there obviously are certain conditions that um, swimming is better for than underwater treadmill. So for example, Underwater treadmill would be great for dogs with hip dysplasia, usually dogs with cruciate ruptures. Um, underwater treadmill is good. It doesn't mean that you can't do um, swimming, um, but they get that extension, so that straightening of the legs that you don't often get in the hind leg um, with swimming. Um, swimming is great for um, just general fitness, for back stability, so for strengthening of the back. Um, for lots of forelimb conditions. So most of the forelimb conditions, swimming is wonderful for. And, and then also some some dogs just do better in one and not the other. You know, some dogs 
don't enjoy swimming, they love the underwater treadmill. So you actually got to also find out what works um, for, for, for your dog. Yes. Um, I've got a question um, from Nanette Kemp. I'm going to put it up there. I don't know if you can see it there, um, Heather. How soon after any surgery can you start with hydrotherapy? Sure. Okay. That, um, firstly, you would consider if there's an open wound, if there are still stitches within the wound, that is a definite no. So um, we are really, really keen or, or prone to, to avoid any type of um, infection. So make sure the wound is 100% um, the go ahead from your vet. So within normally 10 to 2 weeks, um, 10 days to 2 weeks time, you can start getting your dog into the pool. Yeah, it also depends obviously on what surgery. So um, we normally get the go ahead also from the surgeon. Um, so say for example, like a fracture, you know, a fracture surgery, would we wouldn't be putting the dog in so early. So it really depends. But majority of surgeries, um, things like cruciate ruptures, um, um, if they take the head of the femur or for hip dysplasia cases, um, usually it's 10 to 14 days. Um, and like back surgeries, 10 to 14 days. It's really when that wound um, has uh, has healed. Heather, what, what are the main cases that you, you see? Um, so like if you had to sort of look at in all the cases you see, is it many arthritic cases? Is it many, many surgical cases? Sure. Um, yeah, Megan, we, we really see a whole lot of cases. We see a tremendous amount of spinal cases um, and obviously your breeds is more prone to those. Um, but we do see a huge amount of cranial cruciate ligaments. Um, we do see a lot of um, hip dysplasia, elbow dysplasia, as well as um, your older arthritic dogs. And that is one of the, the things I'm really, really keen on working. And it's really a process and a road that you walk with the owners. Yeah. And quite often the owner feedback, should they um, attempt to swim at home between sessions with us? Um, you know, nobody knows your dog better than yourself. And to really give complete feedback and say, I saw there was a certain lameness in a certain limb. Let's have a re-look at that. And quite often... I will ask the owners and people swimming your dogs at home can do it as well. Take a video clip of exactly how your dog is moving. So you can replay it even in slow motion to say after a certain amount of time in the pool, is there progress? Is there recovery? Is it staying the same or is it actually worsening? Um, but yeah, we, we, we see a variety of cases and a variety of animals um, within our practice. And, you know, for those of you that are really far away from a vet rehab therapist or hydrotherapist, you know, I, I, when, when I was practicing in Cape Town, I used to have people that would drive four or five hours to come and see me, have a consultation. I would advise them, show them how to do massage. They might have been doing hydrotherapy at home. They would do exercises. And every sort of two to three months, they would do that whole long drive again to come for an assessment. Um, so even if you if you don't have a hundred therapist close by, you can always make an appointment, um, you know, get the assessment, let them swim your dog, and then you can go off for two or three months. And if everything's fine, that's great. But always come in for a checkup um, and just make sure that that what you're doing is um, is correct. Um, Heather, we, we had another question that was actually from our Facebook um, live um, post. The question was, how much and how often as a preventative um, to keep joints and muscles healthy and toned? So how, I'm obviously thinking how, how often you should swim to keep joints and muscles healthy and toned. Again, it depends, <laughs> like all things with dogs. Um, if your dog is relatively fit and it's got, got good stamina and good endurance and you just want to do a, a maintenance program, you can easily swim your dog three to four times a week. Um, definitely give it a rest time in between. Um, and, you know, the, the duration is really going to depend on your dog's fitness level. If you've got a, a working border collie who just absolutely loves a pool um, and you know what it's got the stamina, you can really, really swim it for up to half an hour. But obviously for those dogs, it's more a fun playtime. 
But if you've got an old labby that's got severe hip dysplasia and the onset of osteoarthritis, and it also absolutely loves the pool, and if you open up your eyes, the dog's in the pool, it might be really wise to control those swims to maybe twice a week and, and rather swim shorter sessions more regularly than one very big long session once a week. Yeah, if they have those long sessions, they often end up getting really sore. We've That's got true. another question from Nanette. Um, I'd also like to know how safe it is swimming for dogs with heart conditions. And um, I'm happy to answer that one, Heather. Um, you know, with heart conditions, you have to be very, very careful. So what I would recommend is any dog that has a heart condition, first of all, needs to get the go-ahead from their vet. Um, so it needs to be managed and controlled. Um, and then I would also recommend that it's done by a professional. Um, if something does go wrong um, during the, the swimming or the underwater treadmill, you want to be sure that your dog is near um, somebody that has CPR, knowledge or be able to treat your dog so that would be my recommendation um so it can it can be problematic um because their heart is not able to pump enough blood around the body if the water is so warm what happens is the the blood vessels dilate and then their blood pressure can drop so it can be quite dangerous so please um rather do it with the professionals and always get your bets go ahead um depending on medications and how stable your dog's condition is absolutely great um Heather, is there anything else that you'd like to add of things that i'm sure you have things that you just wanted to mention i know we've I've asked you loads of questions and you've been no, great that's perfect you know i just think you know what prevention is always better than cure and a little bit of swimming is 100 percent more than not doing anything at all especially if you can have fun while doing it be in the pool with your dog and you know it shouldn't be a tedious process. Um, the word hydrotherapy or aqua really boils down to the concept to supplement or to promote the healing process in a non-stressful manner. And I think the moment that you're going to place additional stress on your dog while going through and doing some hydrotherapy at home, you should really reconsider it. And a lot of dogs are absolutely keen and they will do anything to please the owner. Even stand in a swimming pool for 10 minutes, even though they hate it. But if they just see, wow, that's my owner and that's what they expect us to do, they will do it. But yeah, absolutely. Um, what you said previously with people traveling really far to get your dog to a hydrotherapy practice, um, in my practice, I do cater for long-term and short-term patients. So if you do have somebody from really far and they can't, can't do it, you know, even to book your dog into a facility where people can do it on a more regular basis and at least just start the dog off in a good manner. And then, like you said, come back every couple of months for maintenance. But a lot of the hydrotherapy can also be supplemented or added in after your session with some land-based um, basic exercises like balance, proprioception, weight shifting. And if you do a combination with all those things, you can really, really positively impact your dog's lifestyle. Yeah, I think like you say, you know, if your dog has had a surgery, for example, um, you know, there are many facilities where you can actually just book your dog in if you live so far away get the initial rehabilitation and then you can sort of work on the maintenance. I think that's great advice. Um, for those of you that have got um, um, dogs with more chronic conditions, obviously it's more not ongoing. You could also just book your dog and get your dog accustomed to swimming, making sure that they are um, swimming optimally. Um, because, you know, I think about my dog here, the sunshine. So we rescued a dog like two years ago now, um, my husband found um, her at the Woolworths. She was just sitting outside at the Woolworths and she's got hip dysplasia. And um, we go to Hermanus over December and we go to that Hermanus Lagoon and um, she absolutely loves water. But, you know, when I first got her, she could not swim. So she literally was one of those dogs that would jump into the water 
um, head up and paws up, just panicking with her whole back end dropping like you were describing. And um, my husband was on the jetty and he was panicking. He was like, she's, she's drowning. What's going on? Can't dogs swim? <laughs> And um, and I said to him, yeah, some of them just can. Others you have to teach them. So we had to go and get her a life jacket, and I had to go in the water, my husband, and we had to teach her to swim. And you, I, I actually really wish I'd actually taken a before video and then an after video, um, because from this dog that was swimming sort of like this with splashing front legs, now she swims with this beautiful top line. Yeah, that's um, and, yeah it's amazing. But I had to have the life jacket on and I had to calm her down and, re and get her to understand that, you know, when her body was up, she was a lot more effective in swimming. And she very, very quickly. And I, what I did is I had her in the life jacket. And this is often what, um, what we'll do in hydrotherapy centers. We'll start off with the life jacket until they're actually swimming up to me. They've got a little bit more strength. And then we'll put them into a harness. Um, and that's what I did. I progressed her then into a harness. Um, and then once she got that now, we just throw pine cones for her and she swims out on her own. Um, so and safely, we know that she's, my, and my husband knows that she's not going to drown. Absolutely. Oh, that's so much fun. So, hey, Melvin, we've got quite a few people online. Thanks, guys, for all for joining us. Um, for those of you that are watching the recording, if you have any questions, please, you're welcome to put them in the comment section. Um, Heather or myself will come um, at a later stage and just answer them. And, um, yeah, I just want to thank you, Heather, so much um, for coming online um, just to answer everyone's questions and to chat about um, a topic that you're so passionate about. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to having you. Actually, um, Heather's going to be chatting in a few days um, to our professionals um, on Friday. So looking forward to having you online again, um, Heather. Thank you so much for your time. And thanks to all of you for joining us. Um, I've got some information, which um, you guys are actually the very, very, very first to know. Um, so I am launching in a, probably about four or five hours, um, PetCon 2018, which Yay. is our Pet Owners Conference. Um, we've got six amazing lectures on our pet conference, um, all international conference, and it is free to pet owners. If you have access just for one day, if you want access for longer, you have to pay a little bit, but it's free to everyone. It's all about mobility and joints. So guys, if you want to know about it, um, there is a limited number of people that can register for it. So I'm going to be posting it about four to five hours time. So um, if you go into Facebook and you go up at the top at settings, if you want to get notified first, there's a little button you can say um, notify first when Holistic Vet posts a post um, and please sign up for it. It's going to be absolutely awesome. Uh, uh, there's one more question, Heather. Yes. Um, no, shame. It's someone who's just come on. Um, the dog is starting um, water treadmill after total hip and – oh, she's just saying. That's awesome. Ro Roseanne, she's saying that she's starting um, underwater treadmill and her dog's just had a total hip replacement. She can't wait. That's awesome. Oh, wonderful. That's wonderful. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Have an awesome day. Cheers, Heather. Thank you so much. Bye. Have a good one. Bye.